Yes, guys, what's going on? Hashtag Shorty here, back with... Okay, I'm not sure why I'm clapping so loud. Um, I was about to say back with another, but this is actually my first custom tactics video that I'm going to be bringing to my channel. Um, these are the custom tactics that I used to finish 30-0 in Weekend League. Um, this is actually the leaderboard from last week. Unfortunately, this week in Weekend League, I finished 29-1, and standard from me. Uh, but yeah, these are the custom tactics that I used to finish 30-0. Um, I also use these custom tactics in Bucharest uh, about two weeks ago for the Foot Champs Cup 3 uh, Where I managed to finish top 8 in the tournament So, you know, these custom tactics have been working quite well for me, it's fair to say uh, One more thing to touch on before I go any further into this video um, Yeah, I'm aware about this uh, If it got any bigger, you know, I'd pretty much be Rudolph You know, yeah, it's tough, it's tough, man But anyways, enough blabbering on, let's get into the custom tactics Yes guys, so into the custom tactics here, and first of all, this is the team that I'm currently using to play in these online qualifiers for these tournaments, and that I'm using in Weekend League as well. Um, so this is the exact team that I got 30-0 with. It, yeah, it plays obviously absolutely amazing, the team is, is, is amazing itself, but hopefully it will be changing within the next week or so, uh, before the next qualifier as uh, I've saved up like three weeks worth of top 100 rewards so I should be able to make an upgrade somewhere however yeah it's obviously no excuses on that front it's still an absolutely unbelievable team um so yeah guys I may as well show you the custom tactics of right now so guys these are the four game plans that I use first of all we'll go into defensive which is the formation that I use uh, the sorry the game plan that I switch to at the start of every single game uh it's the one that I use just from the get-go of each game so Let's go into some detail. Uh, first of all, as you can see, the defensive style is on drop back, and drop back is very, very good on this game at the moment, especially with the new patch that's just come in, which has stopped all the you know long ranged shots basically and the first time finesses. Drop back works even better now because people in weekend league will just sort of put 11 man behind the ball, and drop back really helps with that because players will just come back faster. Um, but as you can see with the width and the depth here, uh, so the basic set standard thing is always on five. So, you know, it would be like that with them two. But um, to talk about why my width is on six, uh, sometimes I'm a width on six, six and sometimes I have it on eight. I've been trying between the two. Um, the advantage to have it on, having it on eight over six or, you know, just, you know, having higher width is what I mean. Um, is if you're playing against people that like to play on the wings, it's easy to defend the wings when your width is very high because obviously your players are going to be out wide more so it's easier however um if players are using you know players are playing against you and using a 4-1-2-1-2 diamond uh, and just sort of ping pong passing it through the middle of the pitch coming at you you want to be using you know six or five width because if you're on eight people can just get through your midfield so easily because then they only really have the two sort of cdms to get past uh, if that makes sense. So that's why the width is on that. Depth, there's not too much to look into with that. I sort of just, I, I changed it to four one day and it's kind of been working ever since. So I guess I do like to have my depth slightly further back. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much almost on the standard one. Uh, the same goes for offensively. All of this is very balanced. Um, I don't like to mess with this too much as I feel just in my attack, I should like kind of be able to do it myself. Uh, that's just what I'm most comfortable with off the get-go of a game. So, you know, the other formations that I switch to and the other game plans, that's where you'll sort of see a lot of difference in these bars, you know, this sort of going up here and there and, and stuff. That's where you'll see the differences. But on my balanced one, this is just kind of what I like to use. Uh, so the, both of them are on five, the players in box and the width. And same for corners and free kicks. They're on two out of five, each of them. And this is just simply because... I don't want to be getting counter-attacked easily. So if you had these corners, for example, on five, so you have a high amount of players in the opposition's penalty area, you know, that's great if you score a goal. But if you whip it in and the keeper punches it out, you know, you could be, you know, a bit open. And that's the problem. You don't want to be open off a counter-attack because in this game, people can counter so fast. Um, and going into the instructions on this formation as well, guys, um, Ronaldo is on getting behind as my striker. It's just what I've used every FIFA. I love putting my striker on getting behind. But the main thing you should do with your striker is whenever you're playing with your cams and your, you know, left attacking mid and right attacking mid in Neymar and Mbappe, is whenever you're about to pass, you always, always want to be pressing um, LB, making your striker trigger that run. Um, but getting behind is just what I'm used to using. So I always use that on my striker. Um, Messi, I have on stay forward as my cam. I just like him to be in that pocket and sort of stay up there. Um, 
And then my wingers, they just I just have them on normal, so basic defensive support. So uh, some people like to put their uh, left left attacking mid and right attacking mid, so Neymar and Mbappe obviously on stay forward, but I just like to keep them on on balance kind of thing. Uh, Messi is the only one I like to put on stay forward. Then going on to the CDMs, I have stay back while attacking. It's just what I've used every FIFA and what I'm most comfortable with. Uh, I like my CDMs not getting forward too much, especially when I have four attackers who can be doing the job. I don't really need the help from Vieira and Blanc. Sometimes they'll come up the pitch a bit, but you know I'm most comfortable just using my four attackers to sort of attack. And then my fullbacks as well, I have them on stay back while attacking. And that's just simply because... Um, I, I prefer in my mind to know I have the defensive support, especially because it's really easy, even with them on, stay back while attacking, to get them involved in the attack anyway. So that's why I don't put stay, uh, like join the attack on them or even balance because um, I prefer in my head having the defensive uh, support. So yeah, that's it for my standard formation. Let's get into the next one. Yes, guys, so into the next game plan, and this is going to be my ultra defensive. So this is what I like to switch to when I'm winning a game and I need to close out a game. This is what I like to use. So it's still using the 4-2-3-1 formation as I'm just really comfortable with defending with that. Um, at the tournament, I think I conceded the joint least goals ever in a Swiss format along with Tex. Um, he actually ruined that record because I conceded six to him in the last Swiss game because, you know, it's just what he does. So... Cheers, Tex. Thanks for that, bud. <laughs> but yeah, you know, defensively, my my games went very well at the event. I In the first game, I won 2-0. Um, bear in mind, all these are over two legs. And then I won 3-1. Uh, and then I won 2-1. Um, and then I lost 6-4 to Tex. But yeah, uh, it went quite well defensively. So this is what I kind of like to switch to. So um, the width and depth, as you can see from the last one, is quite similar. So I'm still on drop back, but I've just come down one on width and also come down one on depth as well. Um, just pulling my team back a tiny bit more if I need to. But what you have to bear in mind is most likely when I'm using this formation, the person I'm playing against is going to be using constant pressure. And they're probably going to be coming at me with an attacking formation, 4 triple 2 4 one 2 one 2 and just absolutely running at you. So um, that's why a lot of this is, is very, very obviously defensive looking. Um, but I've already spoken quite a bit about defensively on on this formation, especially, you know, it's quite similar to my uh, normal formation. However, offensively is, is the difference here. So um, I have the offensive style on ba balanced. Um, people could use like long ball, for example, but I just keep that on balance just in my head. I prefer that. The same goes for the width. Um, I haven't messed with that at all. I just like to keep that normal, uh, even, even if I'm going defensive. But what's important to touch on is my players in the box corners and free kicks so as you can see they're all very near the bottom well corners and free kicks you can't go any further down uh, players in box obviously you could but the reason i have that on three still is just if people are absolutely coming at me and i've got the ball back and i uh, and i ping the ball forward you have a few players that could go forward and then it just gets you that extra goal and then you know then you really do close out a game kind of thing because if i have this on you know that you know, I literally have nothing going forward. So that's why I sort of have that on three. But yeah, corners and free kicks, you want that on absolutely nothing, especially if you're trying to close out a game. Last thing you want is getting a corner and having players in the opposition box and them counter-attacking you. Um, so yeah, that's with the custom tactics on that one. Uh, my instructions on this are also extremely similar to my standard formation. Um, the only difference really is that Messi isn't on stay forward. He's just on basic defensive support. And then my left attacking mid in Mbappe and my right attacking mid in Neymar are on comeback on defense so um, that just helps out with the defensive support a tiny bit more but yeah my CDMs stay back while attacking my left back and right back stay back, stay back while attacking it's very sort of self-explanatory this is just a very defensive formation so let's get into the more attacking formations so guys headed into the attacking formation here and so the first one I like to use um, is if for example I don't know I'm just not feeling like I'm working very well in my formation, my normal formation that I use, the 4-2-3-1. If I feel things just aren't going great, I like to use this formation. So, to explain this, press after possession loss um, is a good one, especially if you lose the ball high up the pitch, because it works similar to constant pressure, but then once players sort of get into your half and start attacking you, it's... It's a lot of sort of manual defending, which is what I like to use. 
However, like constant pressure, for example, if you use constant pressure, like you just your players are just running at everybody constantly. So if you know constant pressure does keep people pinned in very well, but if someone can pick apart constant pressure, you are also left very open. So that's why in this formation, I like to use just press after the possession loss because it sort of works like constant pressure further up the pitch. But then if they get into your half, you can kind of defend still quite manually. So that's why I like using that. The width and the depth um, defensively, I have them on six. Um, it's just what I'm comfortable with. I feel like I can be, uh, I can defend more aggressively with it, especially like I said, with the width on, width on six. Six people are going to be probably playing the wings, especially if they're trying to defend more. People might be switching it between their fullbacks and things like that. So that's why I have the width on six and the depth also on six because I've got my team slightly further forward. Um, but I don't want to go too crazy on them. So that's why they're only on six. And then offensively, um, as you can see, I've changed it up here. So free kicks and corners. I've got more players in the box here. This is just because obviously it's a more attacking formation. I'm looking to... You know have a few more players forward but this is not my i would say desperate attacking formation this is just where i don't feel comfortable in a game where i use four two three one someone's maybe countering my formation quite well so four triple two is a formation that i'm definitely comfortable with using in attack so that's why i'll switch to this if i'm not feeling something's right in a game um but yeah the offensive style is just on balance um people could use fast build up for something like this um but like fast build up i don't know the ball just seems to ping around a lot your players are just sort of running around like headless chickens so i just keep it on balance i feel like i'm more comfortable with that um but yeah the width is also on five that's just pretty standard uh but what's more important here you know is sort of the players in the box corners and free kicks players sort of getting forward more kind of thing and going into the instructions here um this formation is very similar to my sort of i'd say desperate attacking formation which i'll show you guys next um, but yeah, I have getting behind on the on the strikers on the cams I just have it on standard and then the CDMs I just have them on standard as well and um, The fullbacks I still keep them on stay back while attacking because like I said before It's easy to get your fullbacks involved in an attack So in my head I prefer them just be on stay back while attacking because like I've said already um, This is not my like desperate formation It's just when I don't feel comfortable in a game and I sort of feel like I need to change things up Um so yeah, let's get into what I class as, wow, I need a goal. So guys, into the final game plan here. And this is that formation that you switch to when you sort of two, three goals down and you're like, I need a goal absolutely ASAP. So let's get right into it. So constant pressure. I'm sure you guys will have played against it a lot this year. I'm sure you will have used it a lot this year. It is very effective uh, and very stressful to play against if you're playing against it. Um, game plan. So... Uh, as you can see, the width and depth here are both on eight. And to explain them, so the depth being on eight, I want my team very far forward, obviously, um, to, to be attacking. However, I don't have it on 10 because, you know, I just, in my head, I don't want to go too crazy with it. But I'm very comfortable with it on eight and eight. Um, the width being on eight is something also that's, like, very important to touch on is if someone's trying to, uh, like, switch the ball and keep the ball, especially while you're on constant pressure... Because if you're on constant pressure against them, they most likely have the lead. So they're going to be trying to keep the ball. So if someone's switching it between their fullbacks, what's really good about the width here, and the same goes for offensively with the width, um, your players are going to be very wide. So, so when they switch that ball, your player will most likely be marking them and you can win that header and then retain the ball kind of thing. So that's why I have them on eight. Um, but yeah, constant pressure, Just to, there's not really much more to go, go on about that. You guys know it works really well because the AI just sort of sprint at you. You can literally see by the little dynamic picture at the bottom there. Like, yeah, just the players just run at you. It's so hard to play against. Um, but one thing that's really important to touch on with constant pressure is you do have to be careful with it. Like, if someone is smart enough to, to realize, oh, okay, you're on constant pressure, you can combat constant pressure. If someone um, LB and X up the pitch or LB and square depending on whether you're on PlayStation Well, it'd be L1 wouldn't it? But you guys get what I'm saying and so they sort of boot it up to your strikers uh, To their strikers and they head the ball down the pitch just opens up and you can create attack really fast especially when Obviously you're on constant pressure. So all your players are gonna be forward kind of thing um, So yeah, that's an important thing to touch on you have got to be careful using constant pressure But uh, it does do a lot for you because the AI just sort of runs at you 
Um, the width here, like I just touched on, being on A is important for the fullbacks and, and retaining the ball. And then players in the box, corners, free kicks. This is all very self-explanatory. Um, it's kind of random that's on seven, but yeah, I just feel the most comfortable that... Um, yeah, you, but you do need a goal. So seven is still crazy. Like You've still got loads of players running into the box. Same with corners, same with free kicks. Um, I just don't want to be absolutely, completely open at the back that if they win the ball back, they've pretty much scored. I don't want that completely. But um, yeah, this, this works very well. It, it's very attacking. So... I feel like if your opponent gets out of this sort of like choke that you've got them in with their team, um, you've just got to say, you know, hold your hands up and say fair play. So let's go over to the instructions here and show you guys that as well. Um, I am getting behind on both the strikers, like like I've said, already touched on before. That's quite standard for me. Um, but the, the left attacking mid and the right attacking mid, I've got them on stay forward. And um, even my CDMs here, I just have them on balanced attack. Uh, like I said, I don't want to go too crazy, so I wouldn't want to put these on, um, sorry, get forward because um, I don't want to go too crazy. I want to have some sort of defense, especially if my opponent is able to work out that I'm using constant pressure and they sort of start um, booting the ball up kind of thing. Um, but yeah, my fullbacks as well are on balanced attack. I, I haven't put them on... Um, on join the attack as well because like i said it's very easy for them to get involved so it's already enough for me taking them off um stay back while attacking which is what i like to use in every other formation so yeah guys those are my custom tactics so guys those are my custom tactics that i'm currently using at the moment hopefully that gave you guys some helpful insight into the types of things i use and why um but obviously one the very important thing to mention is although it works for me it doesn't necessarily mean it'll work for you guys uh, i hope it does but uh, at the same time hopefully there's a few things in there that you could implement into your game um, let me know in the comments what you guys thought of the video um, be sure to like and subscribe and uh, yeah guys we'll be bringing out plenty of videos over the next few weeks um, go to the hashtag hq this week i believe so um, record some videos with the boys there definitely a pack opening um, i've saved like three weeks of worth of rewards so it'd be silly not to <laughs> and um just another thing guys a massive thanks for all the support recently uh i'm really grateful for it you guys are honestly like amazing so uh yeah all i can say is a massive thank you and yeah boys i believe that's everything for now so until the next video don't forget to hashtag it boys